just lovely to be with you again. I'd say it's the fourth time we've been here, and uh, we always enjoy coming. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we are volunteer speakers for Open Doors. Open Doors is a charity that works for the persecuted church. And uh, so it's involved all over the world where Christians are in trouble, basically. Uh, it was started 65 years ago by a guy called Brother Andrew. <coughs> um, you may have read the book, Brother God Smuggler. He smuggled Bibles through the, uh, what was the Iron Curtain then? He struggled books through what was the Iron Curtain then? And um, he had a prayer, because he used to hide the Bibles in his car, and his prayer was at that time that uh, God, you may, Jesus, when you on earth, you may blind eyes see, but I pray that you would make seeing eyes blind. And by praying that prayer, he smuggled literally thousands of Bibles in his car through customs where it was then illegal to take Bibles. And even today, it's illegal to take Bibles into many countries across the world. Even in glamorous places like the Maldives and places like that, actually it's illegal to take Bibles in to the local people. So I'm going to read um, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you've got a Bible, end of chapter 4 and end of chapter 5. This is really about where we put our eyes. Therefore we don't lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away. Yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but is what is unseen is eternal. For we know that in the earthly tent in which we live is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built with human hands. Meanwhile, we grow, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we're clothed, we will not be found naked. While we're in this tent, we grow in a burden, because we don't wish to be unclothed, but be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So that is what mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit that is positive, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we're always confident and know that as long as we're at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. For we live by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we're at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due, or done in the body, whether good or bad. Well, it's a real privilege to talk about the persecuted church and even greater privilege to be here at a baptismal service. What a tremendous thing, baptism. Uh, and it's probably <laughs> 50 years now since I was baptised. I remember it now. I think it takes courage to be baptised wherever you are. And we can look across the world and it takes, if you like, more courage sometimes because there's more risk. But I think it takes courage to be baptised at any point. Uh, the water I gave might have been a bit chilly this morning. <laughs> but you could have been in a muddy river in the back of beyond. Um, and you were welcomed by the church for baptism. Uh, in some countries where it's against the law uh, for people to change their religion. Uh, I know one situation where a young man, he came to faith. Uh, and uh, he came to be baptised. But just as they were about to baptise him, they discovered that he came from a Muslim background. And because it was illegal at that time in that country, it still is, to baptise, to change, they refused him baptism. He was standing right here on the edge of the baptistry, and they refused to baptise him. And he had to go off and be baptised somewhere else. So sometimes it's really difficult getting baptised across the world. Another one in the Philippines from a family again from a Muslim background, it was so difficult for them to be baptised that the way they did it was they went diving into the river. So they dived into the river pretending they were going diving and that's how they did the baptism. But people have done different things across the world. And we're going to just watch one very brief video of similar. 
Hi.